So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Ladies, gentlemen, Nemoidians of a free market age, welcome to episode 43 of Hell of a Pilot. It's definitely 43 this time, and I was very wrong last time. Uh, uh, I love eating humble pie when I'm editing. It's great. <laughs> uh, with me tonight, and as always, on my left, Mike, on my right, Lockie, introduce yourself, fight. Right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm back after an absence, so uh, thank you to all those who sent some messages and expressed, uh, I wouldn't say concern, but just where the hell I was. Um, <laughs> they, I, they don't care. They, they don't, just they don't like, care. They just like a regular yeah, podcast back. Wait on, something, <laughs> something changed. I don't like change. <laughs> and, so, yes. and on my right, um, the very horse, Lockie. <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> no just this is this is Monday night did packs all day Saturday and most of Sunday did you do both shifts on Saturday yeah I oh, was wow. I was oh, yeah. talking non-stop for like nine hours no, you're also which, a- which all jokes aside yeah. is a lot <laughs> so you're also breathing in the packs air yeah it's just full of all god knows what yeah <laughs> it's um a, a hell of a pilot 43 with mike owen and tom waits yeah. <laughs> uh, that I, explains the bourbon and cigarette in your hand yeah <laughs> I probably would have done that. Uh, <laughs> however, I had some prior arrangements in the early days, or in the early hours of PAX, unfortunately, so I couldn't make the first half of the of Saturday, which probably is a good thing, or else you'd have two horses and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the, the company that was running it and organizing the volunteers asked us to do three shifts, and yeah. I thought, oh, that's... That's easy. I can do two shifts at once. So that's fine. And you get to the end of that and you go, I, I have, God, I have I made an error. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she, yeah, she asked me to do three shifts as well. And I was like, I would like to see PAX at some point. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it's episode 43. What's on the show today, Mike? Uh, we're talking X-Wing. <laughs> we are talking X-Wing. Yes. That's why you're listening into this podcast. Yes. If you're, if you're not, then I am very sorry. You're going to have to listen to X-Wing talk. No, no, no. It's not 40K. <laughs> <laughs> not a 40K podcast. <laughs> but also we're talking about the X-Wing itself. The glorious... The new newly, one. The newly boxed, freshly minted, articulating X-Wing. So... They've had one iteration of the T70, and they're like, you know what, stuff it. We'll give you an, another model with the same paint job, but a separate model mm-hmm. with opening and closing wings. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Kind of, kind of makes me wonder when the orange one with articulating wings is coming, because it seems fairly unlikely they would only sell. You mean black one? Pose X wing, yeah. yeah. And once again, <laughs> the market for pre- uh, repainted X wings will be open. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did actually want to paint one of those, just to just to see if I could, because I haven't really painted a spaceship in a bit of a while. And Pose X Wing is just an inverse color scheme of the blue and white. So yeah, maybe I might do that with this one. I know I've mentioned it on the show before a long time ago, but still one of my favorite things I've ever seen on Reddit was a person who bought a black and orange X Wing and then painted it blue and grey <laughs> <laughs> just to make a like, point <laughs> just, just, just for laughs and the the thread the comment thread of people just sad angry <laughs> confused I mean it is his model he can do yeah. whatever he wants with it. I mean you know <laughs> that's actually really funny because he'd be like everyone's like why well, you would, you would, because the only way to get that model was the resistance box set, which That's is right. yeah. not cheap. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So how many models is that of X wings does that bring us to? We have the original X wing, the T, yeah. then the T seventy came out. Mm-hmm. Then the once Saul's Renegades X wing came out with the first articulating wings. Then mm-hmm. the new X wing came out for two point for articulating. Don't wings. forget the X wing that comes in the epic ship. Oh, oh okay. So if, if we're doing paint schemes, yeah, it has a different paint scheme. Oh, okay, paint schemes. Yeah, There's the Luke X wing, which is unique. The yes. Poe X wing, which is unique. That's unless I'm wrong. It's the big. It's the big X wing, which I think comes oh, in the epic. That's seven. Yeah. yeah, seven. Seven X wings. Wow. And this one? Did we mention and this one? The, oh, hang on, hang on a second. Start again. All right. The first ever T sixty five. Yes. The epic T sixty five. Yes. The T seventy. Yes. The black T seventy. Yes. The Saw's Renegades X Wing, mm-hmm. yes. Luke Skywalker X Wing, yes. the Blister Pack T sixty five. No, that, that's seven. That's seven. Okay. Yeah. Was all right. Good. Do you, do you, do you like X Wing? There's seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> There's an X Wing for every occasion. There is <laughs> X X X X X X X, X Wing miniatures. <laughs> X to the power of seven. <laughs> I'm really okay. glad nobody listening got to see me count along with my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we were talking about um, when we were at PAX and explaining things, oh, when you we, we we're doing this to complete beginners and not so much it's not so many beginners, but uh, mostly complete beginners, and we had to explain to them, oh, you know, when you continue this game and you expand to like the larger ships, you get to fly things like the Millennium Falcon. This one here is one of three. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this time with removable pod. Also, I like the removable pod. Oh my god, it's such a nice model. It is. I've never, I've never seen one up until PAX, uh, and you cannot tell that that thing is removable. Yeah, you absolutely cannot tell. Yeah. There is no, there, it is seamless until you re- remove it, and you go, of course it was always there, hmm. because you can't tell then either. It's oh, it's well done, just well done. That is just a spectacular model. That one did blow some people's minds when you'd be showing them the various models that were on display, and you'd ask them, so have you seen Solo? And anybody who said yes, I said, just uh, pull on the front of the Millennium Falcon there, and they'd be like, what? what? <laughs> this also is a ship and you show them the pegs at the bottom and then you explain to them what it does mostly you fill it with explosives and throw it at the enemy yeah <laughs> um, uh, great so what else is on the show today Lockie going to talk about packs a little bit yeah and then and now that Mike's back mm-hmm. we're going to talk about just having played the game a little bit which since second edition came out we haven't really done yet so. mm. yeah and more and, and more I'm doing more Mike's doing law. Mike, <laughs> who who is the subject of the law section? Um, look, I'll I'll spoil it. I am doing. Uh, she is a crew card. She's obviously imperial. It's Sienna Reed. Uh, who is she? Cool. Now. Yeah. See, I have no Wait, idea. I don't, maybe, should we tell? Should we say? Or no, we'll, I'll, we'll, I could lead, we'll lead into this. Let me. Okay, this is the teaser. She comes from the expanded universe, and I think out of the entire expanded universe. Barring the Darth Vader comics, mm. this novel is probably the one that should be the one that makes the translation to film. Okay. Wow. It's that good. Okay. Is she, rep- old claim. is she represented in the game? Yes. Yeah, she's, she's a crew card. Right. Ooh. So she's entirely new yes. canon? Yes. She doesn't exist in Legends new at canon. all. Yeah, she, she's new canon. See, that'd be why I know nothing about her. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I figured, you know... We'll talk more about it, but she's Imperial. She flew a TIE Interceptor. She did some other cool stuff as well, so... All right. Uh, And with that, I believe it's on with the show. Good evening, loyal citizens. You're listening to Holonet News. Tonight, Lockie is away, sick, and I am replacing him very poorly. Lockie, uh... Does your does your voice have a character name, or else, or am I just referring to you with Lockie in Star Wars? So it got to the point where, because I've been doing this character for like <laughs> r- r- rounding up slightly, we've been doing this show for two years, mm. and it got to the point where in my head the character's name was Holonet News. <laughs> <laughs> so and Holo and, for sure. So but, and. I'm not. I'm not doing one tonight. That I. I wrote a small one about the um, piloting academy exhibition, which I was going to call PAX, 
about teaching academy pilots oh, yeah. and all that kind of thing. Did you did you have it? I then? was. I, I want to give it a shot. No, I don't. Damn. I haven't got. It. I, I I was practicing it a little bit, before, and I'm just physically incapable of producing you, you actually voice. look exhausted <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, you, this this man is normally the light sprightly. has gone from his eyes i know he's got like a he's got like a thousand um, yard stare but he's like yes. man the beginners man the beginners they just didn't stop uh, all right I'll, what, so when when you're teaching people to play for the first time it's like Obviously, they're going to make mistakes, and that's a hundred percent legit. Because ninety-nine percent of the people who come past, they've never touched the game before. And like, I know when I was learning to play, I thought a K turn made you go backwards in the back of the yeah. bay, like that kind of thing. So many people but, did that. Yeah. So mm. when when people that's like true, when people were saying stuff about the game that was wrong, it was like obviously that's fine, and you would just tell them. But over the course of the weekend, there was this one guy, Whoa. this one guy, and he just didn't he didn't get it he was there with two of his mates and they were fine and it wasn't my explanation and I can say that because I'd been there for like nine hours and everybody <laughs> else picked it up fine this one guy he just he would try and do an action he'd be like do I do actions now and I'd be like no actions are later then he'd be trying to do other things and he'd be like so can I do an action now and I'd be like no no you can't do an action now and he'd be like oh well I can't shoot I'd be like why because shooting's an action no it's not <laughs> like, it's, he just he just couldn't he just couldn't get it. I was like, just get it, man. <laughs> Do we, the amount of times I went into it, I'm like, it's called the engagement phase, isn't it? It's not called the shooting phase. It, it's called the engagement phase now, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, the amount of times I've had to cr- continuously correct myself, this is their pilot skill. No, it's their initiative. Yeah. We're moving into the engagement phase, not the shooting phase. Yeah. I was like, oh... Yeah, God, look, I think... Old habits die hard. I think if you've been, like a lot of people who listen to this podcast, if you've been playing for a long time, it's just burned into your muscle memory and into your actual memory what these things are. So it's just making that transition. That's hard. Unfortunately, I couldn't make packs. I was planning to, but I had to, to pull out for personal reasons. Um, but I do enjoy teaching people. It's a lot of fun, especially when you see people's joy for the initial... Mm. It's Star Wars, and it's cool, and it's enjoyable. Um, and I didn't see it, but like I uh, usually guys mention, I think the the display that was put on was spectacular. Yeah. The, 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 the facilities. Long, you know, when we were doing it, it was a, a trestle table with a star mat hanging over the edges. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. completely different. <laughs> completely different. Yeah, man. yeah. So what was it? I mean, Owen, how would you describe it? I mean, what did they have? Oh, they had, I think, nine tables. No, eight tables, uh, each with their own... It a, was a three by three table, basically specifically made for it, uh, with enough room to move between. So basically, the ideal uh, tournament setting that will never happen. But <laughs> the ideal tournament setting. Anybody new to the game? It's a fiction. It's not like it this. doesn't happen like this. Trust me. <laughs> you you start on a chair and then you never use it. You sit down once at the beginning and then you never sit down again. Exactly. Get used, <laughs> get used to standing. <laughs> a- any new listeners who haven't been to a tournament, you'll understand. Like you will understand very quickly. Yeah. You'll understand and then you will just stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People like my my fiance. I have to say, have to say fiance now. Yeah. It's like you. Why do your feet hurt from playing a board game? You don't understand. <laughs> Listen, you don't understand. My feet, my lower back, my shoulders. <laughs> oh my god, my lower back pain. <laughs> you hunched over, over for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I tell you though, um, teaching at PAX was really fun because you get to really re reinvigorate your sort of love for mm. the game really just bringing it back to its first elements and, and remembering why you just like yeah. playing X-Wing just the simplicity of it all and then the amount of joy you get from just having or the the, amount, the most amount of fun I had when I was teaching it was actually between couples oh because, cool like uh, you know yeah and they would come along and they'd fly against each other and like a TIE fighter would start whittling away at his X-Wings and then bang, one sh- an X-Wing would just one shot a TIE fighter. And then all of a sudden the, ta- the tables are flipped and you're like, oh, what's going to happen now? Hmm. And the amount of times I'm, I was like, all right, we'll just do, we'll do one more round and then something will happen in that round that was like, okay, now I just really want to know how this is going to end. We're going to do another <laughs> round. <laughs> But I think, isn't that the core of what is the X-Wing experience is enjoyable? It's that 
drama and narrative yeah, that's the, the drama there. of Vault that, oh. that because it's the you know it's sort of yeah that's that's the fun part it's the dice roll there's three crits and then you go I got three of eight. <laughs> oh yeah uh, that happened once to me oh, it was four three natural crits into three natural of eight so I was like what is this game even <laughs> <laughs> I think one of um, yeah that's something what you were saying about um, being really into into the game you were teaching at one point somebody had to step away to go to the toilet or lunch or something and I ended up running two separate tables which which doesn't sound like much but actually wasn't all that easy but it kind of got to the point where both of those games had turned out to be quite interesting like every time I'd step from one to the other mm. there would have been actually a, a pretty significant change when I got back and then um, at one point Harry Nick who was there as well came over and, and said oh you're running two tables do you actually want some help like should I relieve you of one of these and I was like no, I actually am emotionally invested in both of these <laughs> tables. It's okay. I'll just leave me with both of them. Um, these but, are my yeah. fledglings. <laughs> uh, but my, I think my favorite thing, and this happened a couple of times, my favorite thing that happened over the weekend was when, would be when somebody who had never played the game before when it just clicked with them. Mm. And this happened with players on both sides. Like there was a guy, one guy who came over and he grabbed both of the TIE Fighters and he just executed a perfect pincer movement. <laughs> oh, really? His, his first turn, the TIE Fighter on the left, three banks left, the one on the right, three banks right. Then on the next turn, they hard turn back in and the X-Wing was just right in the middle. And mm. tight, these two TIE Fighters at range one with focus tokens, he was like, this is good for me, right? And I was like... <laughs> Yes. Yeah. This is and, very good. Yes, you have and, killed boxed him. <laughs> and, and there was one, you know, there's uh, one guy um, as well. He he had the X-wing, and I had explained that the focus tokens go away, but the lock token you you bank for another turn. The a Tie Fighter was behind him, so he but he was on the other side of an asteroid. So he goes probably don't need the focus for defense i'm gonna bet my extra green dice is gonna help me i'm gonna lock this ship that's behind me and save it for later and he turns around on another turn he's got a focus token on the lock and just blazes this tie fighter away mm. he's like that's good right <laughs> <laughs> like, again yes <laughs> oh these yeah the amount of times like just just relearning how target locks work and then not not so many not so much relearning them but Relearning the joy of like explaining to someone and being like, so remember that target look you took in turn two and it's now turn seven? Yeah, and now, yeah, it, pays now off. it pays off That's because right, you're exactly. going to destroy this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, people would people would often we only we were playing with core sets, but we had we had um, fire sprays and and land only and falcons on the table and stuff, and people would come over and and look at the models and that's that's what would make them want to play and then they'd get they'd get a couple of turns in you know have one or two rounds of combat and just go this is awesome you know i want to i want to go buy this game and mm. I, I really feel like i made fantasy flight games a lot of money this weekend <laughs> oh um 100 i went to a uh, general games which was probably the closest one there was um house of war and general games oh, yeah. which are both yeah. i think almost australia exclusive so mm -hmm. sorry internet um, and this was toward, this was after everything closed down after we'd, we'd packed up for the Saturday and I looked at the the stand of General Games like well, this is the X-Wing stand it was a, a stand specifically for X-Wing and that had originally piles and there was like three left and I was like yeah I think we've done a good job <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive was, yeah um, did you have anybody anybody do it backwards do what backwards? Uh, okay, as in, no, no. Um, so <laughs> yes, that <there's, laughs> all the time. No, so I just realised how vague that question was. So quite a lot of people came over, played the demo game, went away, purchased the game. There was one guy. Uh, he seemed he seemed pretty young, um, and he came over with this big plastic bag and he opened it up and showed it to me and there was a core set and stuff inside and he goes oh, I just went and bought this Star Wars game and I was like yeah good choice man he goes yeah can you teach me how to play <laughs> I was like oh so you just jumped in with both feet didn't you <laughs> <laughs> oh, those miniatures though they sell themselves honestly it's, well, it's the reason that I originally got into it I mean same it's because they're pre-painted and painting uh, miniatures like if you want to get into a miniature game and I did um, painting is very daunting yeah it's like, oh, well, what do you need? You know, now, now, you know, I've spent some time doing it. It's, it makes sense. But I'll tell you what, like, 
the idea of like oh well how do, how do you get into you know 40k or legion yeah. it's like well first you need a primer and yeah. then you need a bunch of colors and then you need paintbrushes and how do you take care of your paintbrushes and what do you use water do what wait what's this paint thinner and yeah. is, is does isn't doesn't that like peel paint off the thing oh no it's paint flow it's like i don't even I, Barriers to entry. Yeah, it, yeah, it's ridiculous. And at what point can you say you can play? But I really, I really like. And honestly, the paint, the painting on these these new core sets is just getting better and better and better. It's just good. Yeah. Look, I think the like if you like having played the game for a few years now, I, you can I, if you line up your models, you can actually trace the evolution of oh, their really? development you can mm. see how mm. much better mm. like take out a Y wing from first like first wave yeah and then line up all the other ships like line the ships up in the waves that they came out and then you'll start to see huh like kind of like when you look at the early ships they're kind of like low res detail they look like they're kind of out of focus if you're looking at something and okay in, 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 but as you get newer like compare <laughs> that to Lando's Falcon yeah Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, what, what you just yeah. said made me think. Yes. The, the spaceships, the spaceship models we use to play X Wing aren't actually small, they're just very, very far away. That's <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, see the Y Wing. <laughs> okay, so quick question. In the movie uh, Solo, was the satellite dish sort of like flat up against the ship? I think it was. I've seen the movie now. You have, you have oh, seen the movie. Good. Good. Seen so we can I talk spoilers. That. We can talk spoilers. <laughs> this episode of Hell of a Pilot, a movie spoilers. that came out six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so if, if it is... Okay, because that was driving me nuts yeah, on, the, on, the, uh, on the ship because the, the dish was flat. And I'm yeah. like, wait, no, it's supposed to be coming up. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, everything else is perfect, so maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> so I was uh, wrong. I guess they had to... I mean, for the for the movie, they're like, this is the third time the Millennium Falcon's going to be so-called introduced on screen. We have to make it look just slightly different again. So, mm. I like their idea of going back to the circular dish. Yeah. Uh, because in the original trilogy, it was a circular dish. Yeah. Well, a lot of the the a lot of the newish the ships that we've seen in the new films are actually callbacks to the original design. Mm. So the RZ A wing, which is in the Last Jedi thing mm. um, that was a callback to Walt Mc- uh, Ralph McQuarrie's original concept art, mm. like it was slightly more and elongated. The T seventy, I think, was how the X wing yes. was drawn originally as well, with like the half engine. <laughs> yeah, as well. really? Yeah. Mm. Ah. So there's a lot of a lot of kind of callback to you know the origins. Well, at least there's some respect there. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's actually talk about this new X-Wing. X-Wing Mark 7. Yeah, Mark <laughs> The seventh edition of the same ship. <laughs> this time with articulating wings. Yes. But still blue. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, what are we starting with? Well, let's just, uh, let's just do the, the images in, in order. Okay, in order... What is happening? Poe Dameron? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. So, so, significant change. Yeah. Significant change to his... Um, so, his peer... He's, sorry. <clears throat> initiative. Oh, six. God. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> take, a, take a shot every time. Yes. Get drunk by the end of the night. However, he is called a trigger-happy flyboy. That's his, uh, his, you know, his secondary name. But... His skill is after you perform an action, you may spend a charge and it recharges. It's mm-hmm. a rechargeable charge um, to perform a white action, treating it as red. Now, do we think this is good or bad? Because it is action economy, which is very not very common. It, it's basically push the limit. Yeah, it's push the limit. The thought occurs to yeah. me, it doesn't say an action on your action bar. So Ooh. if you have an R2 astromech or an R5 astromech... With a barrel roll... Uh, oh, sorry, not, yeah. R2 is not an action. The R5, though, yeah. is an action. Yeah. So you can... You can, um, as red, I think, repair a crit. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to. Do, is, there, is there a ship that... Or is there any sort of upgrade that will allow it to do a barrel? The, one of the BB-8s. Uh, the BBs. The BB BB-8. units. Yeah, oh. so BB-8 and the BB so unit. We'll get to that in two. So, yeah. so you're laughing. Because he's, he becomes old Poe Dameron. Except yes. now at the highest initiative. 
Yeah, well, he doesn't. He doesn't have the ability to con- constantly have that focus ability he had in yeah. edition one. Oh yeah. But having pushed the limit equivalent. So for the for those of you who forget or who are only joining us in the second edition, push the limit was action economy. You know, take a stress oh, to take actually, an additional. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of people who have joined us recently, and they, yeah. even some of them came up and said hi at PAX yeah. that they've gone back yeah. and, and sort of only listened to the last two or three episodes because yeah. they just started in 2.0 and there's no reason to go back to 1.0 yeah. which makes sense yeah mm. so for those of you new to 2.0 welcome into a great game um, Push the Limit was a pilot, sk- uh, pilot talent which allowed you to take an extra action for the cost of a stress and it was ubiquitous and powerful and probably one of the best upgrades in the game the, for it three was points. one of the first upgrades of the game and yeah. also stayed throughout the whole thing because yeah. you could boost into a barrel roll and you'd be laughing and yeah. you, that worked really well at TFL because yeah. then he also would have a focus so he'd yeah. have everything he wanted yeah. and be laughing and yeah. also highest initiative so you could never pin him down yeah so I'm saying Poe I think Poe's gonna I think he's gonna be expensive I don't think we have yeah. point costs yet um, I reckon he's going to be... Up in the 70 or more? Yeah, I reckon. Going to be around the cost of Darth Vader. Is I reckon. Yeah. Um, How much is Darth? Yeah, that's a yeah, question. 78 or something yeah, like that. 78, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so he's expensive. Um, they're, they're definitely going to stick uh, to the old idea of having a Millennium Falcon... And Poe Dameron. Yeah, this is. But you see, Poe is part of a two ship build. Yeah, well, yeah. I know. I know. I've said this a lot recently, but with the First Order and the Resistance having fewer ships available at launch, mm. you're going to have to be able to do more with less. Correct. So, I feel like part of the point of Second Edition is having a lot more freedom to have to do what you want to do. A large squad, a small squad, whatever. Mm. But if you're going to play exclusively with Resistance and First Order, then you're going to Probably more so resistance actually than first order, but you're going to need smaller squads. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. As you say, you got less ships. First order will still have its real cheap tie fighters because you know. Yeah. They're they're just tie fighters. Yeah. Um, another great thing about explaining that at PAX, where you know, oh, what what does the whole squad entail? Like, oh, what what you're playing here is about a quarter of the game. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Well, what's a full squad? Well, full squad can range from two ships to from two ships to eight ships. Mm. So, <laughs> fly eight ships at the opponent. See what happens, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but look, it's um, look T seventy itself. It has baked into it a focus, a target lock, and a boost, native mm. boost, which it did have in the original. Three red, two agility, four shield, four hull, three shield. Um, so is that that's more now, isn't it? I think it's an extra shield. It is an extra shield, and the- also an extra hull. Or am I? No, I, I- always four hull. I can't remember actually. Yeah, neither. Well, no, <laughs> I was, I've dumped all. Ah, uh, I was right. It, it used to be. It used to be three three. What they did. Ah. What they've done is, and they did it with the T sixty five. Ah, yeah, as well. that's true. They essentially, Buster. they essentially included the integrated integrated astromech, astromech equivalent. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Because that was just baked in. Everybody just took it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, for those of you new, integrated astromech was an upgrade that allowed you to basically destroy your droid. For the cost of a damage, so you basically you had a free shield in many respects. Oh uh, yeah, because yeah. often the the inter- the astromech you'd be integrating cost one point. So. Yeah, exactly. So it was a, a mm. one basically, point shield. Yeah, one point yeah. shield. One like point a, shield, that's which a big was a thing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. Um, look, I'm excited to fly him. I think he looks good. Yeah, I think mm. I think um, the, I like the T seventies. Um, I'm probably more likely to fly resistance than I am um, rebel for some reason. I'm just more excited. more resistance than rebel. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah than the rebel faction. I mean, I like. I've got a lot of the Rebel stuff, but I don't know. I just... I, I, I love the T-70. I think that's probably what it is. It's an aesthetic thing for me. I think, I think I'm actually... Might be in the same boat as you. Like, mm. I, you know, I've been flying Scum for a long period mm. of time. And honestly, I've, if anything, I would like to go fly a Millennium Falcon T-70. Yeah. Just I think that's just simple, classic. Yes. Classic. Yeah. Simples. Yeah. Um, Both good ships. Yeah. Yeah. You're not... You're not thinking too hard about it about yeah. like the ridiculousness of yeah. you know as much as I love Paylob like you, you still have to remember it and you're, if you're still flying a mul- the Moldy Crow and it's a terrible ship but it's good, it's good now but no it's all awesome. I flew against Lockie and I mean destroyed my squad it's good okay <laughs> so uh, a big part of me hopes that the the tech upgrades that allowed you to store the focus and evade tokens don't come back mm. um yeah, is, I know Poe's ability is different. It just, it just always felt to me like 
you weren't really supposed to store those things. Mm. The game, there was a bit less risk involved when you didn't have to make the decision of which token to take at a given yeah. time. But yeah, I, I feel like Poe's... Uh, he's got a few options for what droid he wants. I still reckon that R2HA is is not a terrible choice for him. He's the one who allows you to spend a lock um, defensively. Hmm. And yeah, Poe being able to take lots of actions means he's got a good chance of getting a lock. And I don't think you need a huge amount of upgrades on him either. No. I think you could fly him naked and still do quite well with it. Once again, one of those naked yeah, ships, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So something that something that all the all the X wings have at the moment is the integrated S foils card. Mm-hmm. So when they're when they're open, mm-hmm. they they don't do anything. That's the same with the T sixty five and the T seventy. Mm-hmm. But when they're when they're closed, they differ just slightly, which makes sense because the T seventy is a more is a more advanced ship. It, theoretically, it's a superior ship. Mm-hmm. So while you perform a primary attack. If the defender is not in your bullseye firing arc, roll one fewer attack die. So that's different to the T-65, mm. which is just roll one fewer attack die. Mm. And when the s foils are closed, it gives the ship barrel roll as opposed to... It's as a linked action. Yeah. But it's, also as well, a focused linked action. A, yeah. Even as a... Yeah. Uh, just an action on its own, which yeah. is the reverse of the T-65, which has, which has which barrel again, roll. Which again, I like the action economy that's been built into mm. um, the T-70. I just... You know what it probably is? It appeals to me more so because it's an ace dog fighter. It, yeah. It, it, that's why it appeals to me. Sort of like the X-Wing T-65 is a is a good solid jouster. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this, I think, just has a little bit more pizzazz. Well, here is this um, uh, barrel roll that I was uh, referring to at the very beginning. So this allows now allows Poe to boost and barrel roll sl- also the opposite direction of barrel roll and then boost. Mm. And, you know, either one of those. Doing them in, in a specific order... Mm. It, it can be limiting, but having them either way, that's yeah, it's it's, it's going to be a good ship. Mm. If you if you do play a two ship list, and one and one of the ships is a Millennium Falcon with the C three PO crew granting coordinate, yes, then Poe is going to be able to do a ridiculous amount of things. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I'm not saying this is a good idea. <laughs> Don't do it, I'm, people. But I'm curious <laughs> yeah. about what would happen if you put heavy laser cannon on Poe, which you can do because of the integrated hard oh. point thing, <laughs> left the S foils closed the whole game, oh. never touched them once, and just tried to bullseye all the time. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Well, so if... Heavy laser wing. <laughs> yeah. So C-3PO would probably activate... It has to be either way, doesn't it? Sorry. So, See, well, Ray Ray's pilot skill is sorry. Ray's initiative is five. Han's initiative is six. So Ray would always be giving you the focus or the lock mm. with your X wing before it got stressed. Because if you did the double action, it got stressed. No coordinate for you. Even if Han and because Han and Poe are the same initiative, you just choose for Han to go first and use his action to corner. But so you could lock. Or focus, so have the modification, mm. and then boost barrel roll. Yeah. And if you're good at landing bullseye arcs, which I don't think anybody is yet, but still, if yeah. you were, your X wing, yeah, your X wing is just silly. Lots now. of lots of shenanigans, <laughs> lots wow. of X wing shenanigans. This is you know one of those things. Uh, teaching players, teaching the people who are new to the game how to fly very well quickly, because. You're gonna. You're either firing with two attack dice, or you're firing with four attack dice. <laughs> Gets good. Also, I quite like, and at some point, anybody listening to this will will see the art on the integrated S foils card. Yeah, I like it too. I I kind of like on the closed side, just the like the the what's the word, like the powdery neony colors. It reminds yeah. me of. I don't know what this is called overseas, but every country has it. In Australia, we've got Dark Zone, which is that thing where kids, where you put on the laser, the laser tag packs, and you oh, run around yeah. this oh, maze, yeah. and they play disco music, and there's neon lights and neon paint and stuff on the walls, and that's what this card looks like. So to me, it's, to me like, it kinda, a, it's, it's like a Star Wars rave. <laughs> yeah. To me, it kind of looks like F Zero or, or Wipeout 
from like oh, from the, the 80s from the 80s 90s like yeah, 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 yeah. really really old school like racing actually you know what game. or Tron it's like Tron oh, era it's like yeah it is like Tron era yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the sequel to Tron what's it called Tron Legacy or something, something like something, that yeah, yeah. is the only movie I've ever really enjoyed watching it with the 3D glasses yeah okay oh yeah, yeah. because I, I can imagine that would add a lot hmm. but anyway let's move on to image number 5 BB-8 Hey, it's the same art. Oh, <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, so, before you execute a blue maneuver, you may spend one charge to perform a barrel roll or boost action. Two charges, non recurring. Resistance so, only. Resistance oh. only. That's actually not, that, that's actually potentially very powerful. Oh, I don't so like it. it. Why not? I just. You, you get it twice. So you wouldn't be putting it on. Um, yeah, I just I don't see you putting it on Poe. When there's other better options. When there's other when there's other better options to basically, you have that already. You have the barrel roll action. Yeah. And the boost action. I know this is before you move. So it's. <sighs> and I know only it's twice. only it's only twice per game. But imagine being able to either boost or barrel roll, mm. then do another action, the opposite one, so you got your double reposition, then you got to do the blue manoeuvre, de-stress, and then get a third action. Potent- and then mm. even maybe a fourth action. And if somebody coordinated you a fourth action. Imagine a scenario in Why which... Why wouldn't you be able to do a fourth action? Is it, is it only one? Oh, because... If, if somebody, so, if somebody uh, coordinated so... you for a lock... Then you revealed the blue maneuver mm. before you executed it. Oh, did sorry, the barrel I, was, roll, I was thinking of the boost, charge. Then for, yeah. So that's only twice per game, which which I admit is not a lot, and I it don't could be think critical. I don't think BB-8 would be super expensive because of that limitation. Yeah. But mm. things like the R2 Astromecha limited as well. I think second edition is leaning towards just not giving you heaps of resources to use yeah yeah actually i think that's a that is a key theme because you'll notice but also a lot of these abilities used to have no resource restrictions you just did yeah. whenever you wanted yeah whereas now i think as you say it's not only about restricting resources but forcing you to make more choices more considered choices and that's that's what this kind of mechanic is about. But I I actually well, I think I don't know if it's top tier, but I think I've what I've seen like I've, look I haven't played extensively. I only played a few games of second edition, but I've experimented with things like afterburners and other stuff like that. And when you need it, it kind of like when you really need it, that kind of thing, it actually can make a big difference. Yeah. So anyway, should we I always on? I always Sorry, liked guys. I always liked BB8, who I think was designed in part for avoiding obstacles Mm. yeah because you would you know you'd land if you ever landed in front of a rock or something and just known that next turn you're going to hit that no matter what Mm. then you know that's always annoying but bb8 is so it frees you up a bit because you can just land in front of that rock if for some reason it benefits you because on the next turn you just move to the side and move forwards now that's not unlimited anymore um, in first edition I used to like to put BB-8 on arcs arc yeah. 170s because yeah. then you'd pretty much always have one of your firing arcs on someone because yeah. Yeah. a barrel roll on arc on 70s can is not you be on a rock and barrel roll off the rock to move to avoid taking the uh, asteroid damage now I I think you can and look it's not, listeners, is it not an action yeah, l- yeah. listeners correct me if I'm wrong I think it's not when you're on a rock it's not that you're not allowed to do actions because you're on a rock it's just that being on the rock makes you skip that perform action step yeah. Yeah. so someone can coordinate you off the rock later for example which is something that Fen used to do to ghosts hmm. um, so I think if you're if you stuffed up on one turn and landed on a rock on the next turn you can BB-8 off it I think so okay. yep yeah. Yeah, the- so if someone tractor beams you onto a rock, you can just say no and leave. In the next turn. In the next turn, you could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now I see some point of BB-8. Mm-hmm. So, so I think tractor beams are uh, they coming back. Hmm. So the difference between a bit like R2 and R2D2 and R5 and R5P8, I think it is. The difference between BB-8 and the generic BB astromech 
mm. is lost to me because I've clicked the wrong thing. BB Astromech. Limited to two charges, resistance only. Before you execute a blue maneuver, you may spend one charge to perform a barrel roll action only. No boost. So BB-8 is a bit more versatile. Okay. Mm. Yep. I like it. I don't, I don't, it, it. It'll be cheaper by like probably two points. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe mm. even one. <laughs> so another thing we've talked about before, we'll just go into it again a little bit, the black one title. Mm. <laughs> not as Sorry, good as oh, that's interesting. Not as good as the first one. No, it's not. But that's but that's good though. It's, like, it's supposed to be that way. It was annoyingly yeah. good in first edition. Yeah, like yeah. all you needed to do what was if I remember correctly, just do a boost or something like that. It just shed a shed a target lock. Old. Yeah, to shed a target lock. And yeah. with BB-8, it was just like oh, great. I'm always shedding target locks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Plus with these native ability of permanent um, evade action with the focus token. Yeah. Mm. So the black one title, which is obviously unique and only for a T-70 X-Wing, has a single non-recurring charge and grants you the slam action. The ability is, after you perform a slam action, lose one charge. Then you may gain one ion token to remove one disarm token. If your charge is inactive, you cannot perform the slam action. So you, you can either use it to escape if things aren't going well for you because you're not mm -hmm. required to take that ion token or if you're you know if you're really good at eyeing things out you can you can slam around sort of gunboat style hard three hard three get yourself in the perfect position to shoot take an ion token and yeah weapons well, look, free I mean, remember the remember the old advanced slam on the yv or something else like that it was an illicit um, slot, but like having an event, having an emergency once only slam. Oh, the, um, the, yeah. the illicit upgrade. The, yeah, um, so again, for new listeners, so in edition one, there was an illicit upgrade, which was like an, a, a slam, and you used to put it on typically the YV666, mm. which is the big scum based ship, and that ship turned like a brick, but if you used it that one time, it was just brilliant. Mm. Um, Slam and on uh, slams on gunboats are really good as well. So look, not as all-purpose useful as the original Black One title, but I don't know. Depends on the cost. If it's only a few points, if it's not that expensive, then mm -hmm, I say uh, use it. It could come. It could come in handy. I think. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's versatile because you can use it. You can use it aggressively or defensively. You yeah. can use it to to get away. Yeah. Or you can use it to, to turn around and attack. Because when you when you take away mm. your weapons disarm token, mm. you're not restricted to primary weapon. You can mm. use the torpedo or missile that's on mm -hmm. there, for yeah. example. So mm. uh, and uh, with with again with Poe, you can then perform an action after it. So you know yeah. you could slam and then barrel roll into arc. So it's it's another one oh, of those yeah re yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or, or so, boost oh, just for extra. You know, I've talked myself into it. I like it. So you, <laughs> wait, 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 it doesn't say up to range three though, does it? So that, that slam is one of those is an action where you can basically copy the same speed. Yes. So yeah. you could go four, four, <laughs> jump four, and then boost. Yeah. And just and then like, you're off the board. And then you're off the board. <laughs> if you really want to end the game quickly. Yeah. Damn it! I'm suiciding. I'm not going to give you the pleasure of killing me. Oh my me. god. Would <laughs> Wouldn't that just be the craziest though? Just, just turn, turn one, range one, shot, shoot them. Just they wouldn't expect it. Like, oh, that, yeah. like you know what? Do a one bank and then a one hard, and you're like, boom. I would, I would love to see that. You know, in the first turn, they everyone maybe like slow rolling. Oh yeah. Just like, oh, I'm not sure I'm gonna take. Oh, oh yeah, I'll, just boom. I'll, I'll just take a focus, and you're like, ha ha. <laughs> Huzzah! I hope you like that tie fighter because it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about let's talk about some pilots. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, the ones that they have decided to to give some names to, because mm -hmm. the the Force Awakens core set came out before we knew anything about the Force Awakens. Yeah. So that was why there was a ship called Blue Ace and Red Ace. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. So they they got access to what the ships were going to look like. They just didn't have any access to any disclo undisclosed material like yeah. character names. Yeah. So they're like, ah, Blue Ace. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember him from the movies. <laughs> <laughs> the famous scene between him and Poe. So Blue, well, Blue Ace. <laughs> all right. So we we keep saying him, but Blue it's Ace. Blue Ace. Blue Ace is a her. Her yeah. little flavor text is Why? woman of action. Why didn't they just have a flavor text as Blue Ace? 
Because that, that is a good point. Because then they could have come back and be like, "Well, this is actually Blue Ace. That was this was the name of the Blue Ace." And all the first editions would have been like, "Yeah, not some generic title like or Woman of Action." There but could have been Blue Woman of Action. Blue Woman of Action. <laughs> yeah, in like Star Wars, there are blue women. Twi- <laughs> Twi'leks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, right. so we've seen this kind of her ability we've seen this before when you boost you may use the one hard or the uh, left or right template instead yeah that's okay so it's K- okay K- Kuhn. I don't mind that at all actually that, that'd be fun as as so, pilot skill initiative 4 that's pretty decent yeah. in this in wow the show, right? she had a bit of a boost though didn't she so her, her pilot skill in first edition was 5 mm-hmm. and so She's, yeah, been given a bump. So, at Initiative 4, in that's first edition speak, six? that's pipe PS6. Mm. Yeah. Which, PS5 was always just a, was dead little, a little bit quick. low yeah. to use that. Because it's not... It's, not, it's, a, it's a nice ability. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. you're not... It doesn't say you must use the hard to, the hard ones. It's just, it's just that you can. Yeah. So you're sort of getting Daredevil for free. Can you, know? can you open up uh, the Blue Ace art again? I'm just I'm just curious on something. I you could, just closed but it. I accidentally closed it. Blue Ace. Except for right now. Great. When it's can open you again. flick it back to the other one? I'm really interested in this. Oh, okay. So it's it's the same artwork. It's, it's just, just slightly different, different angle. Hue. Yeah, and different angles. It looks like it's, slightly. No, it's, oh, it's, it's the angle. exact same artwork. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's a different hue. And I was like, oh, that looks cool yeah. and new. I haven't seen that before. It's just because colors. Slightly so different. I always I always enjoyed flying Blue Ace. I quite often tried to get her in squads just just for the heck of it. I would put on the the Astromech um, R two D six, I think, and and give her VI. Oh, yeah. So for mm. two more points, she was PS seven. And that's it's okay. That's still not high enough to be an ace, but it's still it still made a bit of a difference. Yeah. And I think in second edition, where there's fewer really high initiatives getting around. Yeah. Um, Look, um, pilot skill initiative is pretty good. Like it's high enough for a lot of the squads that you're going to be flying against. Mm. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So. But the yeah. met- the meta currently is still is still in that sort of generic. Um, missile pods, isn't it? It's, there's nothing. The tire bombers. Yeah, there, there's no there's no real aces flying around at the moment, is there? I mean, sort of. There's a bit of alpha striking happening. There's bloody Jakku gun runners. Yeah, yeah they're everywhere. Oh really? Yeah, yeah they're, they're like huge. The, yeah, those things are. Yeah. those things are nasty um, little things. So I guess. <laughs> I guess it depends. I guess it depends on what you want to refer to as the meta like what, what do you consider yeah, yeah. to be a meta what do you see out on the, in the well, world there's, there's a lot of and I guess that's one of the one of the reasons that they wanted second edition to exist there's actually several different things floating mm. around out there I love world. it some things are undeniably more powerful and more popular than others mm. but there's just more different stuff and hardly anyone flies jump masters and that's fine mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's so fi- it 2. finally 2. happened. Two point oh was the final jump master nerf. <laughs> <laughs> you wait, it'll, something will come out, and it will be like, "Oh, this will be go right. great on the jump master." So I'm, um, yeah, basically, I'm very excited about the the two point oh blue ace equivalent. But yeah. here's here's one that I would say was a failure. Joff, Joff C Striker. Mm-hmm. So reckless bodyguard again could have just gone with red ace. Well, Joff Sea Striker comes from the comes from the novel Bloodlines, um, yeah. which which yeah, everybody should read. Mm-hmm. Is that is Bloodlines? That's not the tie-in novel for Battlefield, is it? No. Have you not read it? I'll lend no, it to you. I would like to read the, it. No, it's uh, really Blood, good. Bloodline is the is a story set before the Force Awakens. It's the story of how the First Order is discovered. Um, oh, yeah. Un, I, I think mm. rarely in Star Wars expanded fiction Leia is the main character I don't think mm. that was terribly common mm. um, so a novel that focuses largely on Leia and yeah, yeah. It's, it's just really good and Joff C. Striker is her reckless bodyguard mm-hmm. so at initiative 3 he has Red Ace's ability after you lose one shield gain one evade token now mm, that's... Red Ace Red Ace was PS6 Mm. So that's that's a drop in yeah. initiative. Now, 
I but that makes will... sense because if you've got a regenning shield, high PS, you, you, yeah. But it's kind of don't that, regenning so, the shield though. I I all in the vague, sorry, yeah, I sorry. admit, and I've said several times yeah. over the years, I was wrong hmm. about Red Ace in hmm. in first edition. So Red Ace's ability was the first time you remove a shield token from your ship each round, assign one evade token to your ship, which at first glance is like that's terrible. You get an evade token for losing a shield, but. In first edition, there was the tech that allowed mm. you to keep evade tokens at all times. In first edition, an evade cancelled out an attack dice in addition to the dice you rolled. Yeah. And in first edition, there was unlimited regen with R2-D2. So yeah. you put those things together, yeah. try and lose shields on purpose, yeah. then you just gain them back with R2, you'd have a free evade token, and you'd be able to dismiss and regenerate. You'd hurt yourself of, to get an evade. Exactly. You'd be able to regenerate a lot of health for yourself and dismiss a lot of yeah. attacks from the enemy. In second edition, evade tokens only change dice results. There's much less access to regen. Mm. So and and this this pilot is likely to be forgotten. Outflown. I I just I don't understand and look I'm willing to be wrong again obviously but I don't I don't, you, don't see do you think, the role that this ship is intended for will that tech come back you reckon what will what come back be able to hold, hold an evade token do you reckon it'll come back well I'm hoping oh. not but even if there was what would be the benefit Un- unless you're a ship with Duke yeah. you probably don't want to have an evade token all the time because you're rolling two two green yeah. dice and it's not in first edition with the evade token if you rolled two green dice you could still dismiss three damage yeah. in second edition you can only it doesn't work two. that way so it's it's a far less powerful ability on a ship with much less much lower initiative I, I don't get it I don't think we're going to see a after lot of after you lose one shield gain one evade if you lose two shields do you gain two evades it doesn't say well that's what I was thinking when I first looked at it I mean yeah it seems to be that way but it's after you don't lose the shield until you've taken the damage so you don't lose the shield until you've already failed your roll yeah like if and And once you get that token if you don't use it again it'll disappear so if this ship only gets shot at once that's pointless if this ship is the only ship on the board it, it might get a bit of use but then it's having a bad day anyway and yeah. I don't yeah, not cool <laughs> yeah so especially since the article says there's there's something like nine unique pilots okay I just so this one is off picking this so one. this one is folder chafe yeah <laughs> basically um yep R2 Astromech uh that's that's the same as the yep. the rebel one but yep. it's not faction locked so yep. obviously after there you reveal your dial you may spend one charge to gain a disarm token to recover a shield. Yeah, that's good. So, Lieutenant Bastion, a ship that when I first saw it, I wasn't I wasn't really I wasn't really sold on the pilot ability. But Lieutenant Bastion, after a ship at range one to two, so this can't affect itself, is dealt a damage card, you may acquire a lock on that ship. So Again, I'm not really pumped about this abel- ability for reasons I alluded to with the Chewy crew card mm. we talked about in the other. Mm. But M9G8 uh, is, good old is an astromech that's made it into second edition from mm-hmm. first edition. Okay. While a ship you are locking performs an attack, you may choose one attack die. If you do, the attacker re-rolls that die. Oh, that's not bad. So, yeah. Exactly. Now, in, in first edition, it specified that you, that a ship with this droid was allowed to lock friendly ships. That cost three points, so potentially five or six in second edition. And in second edition, it's part of the rules of the game. You can just lock anything, even friendlies. So, if you put M9G8 on this ship, admittedly, you have to wait for your friendly to take a damage. But if it does... Bastion locks onto that friendly with M9G8, and then when that friendly returns fire, you can modify a dice. I, I don't see that's going to be a, a particularly strong way to use it. I think the only way to potentially use it is to use it offensively and shoot something, give it a damage card, lock that ship, and then just say from then on, they're re rolling a hit or potentially a crit. Ah, so you're saying that you. 
instead of waiting for the waiting for the friendly to take damage and yeah. letting them re-roll, you're saying do it to the opponent. Yes. Okay, that's that's obviously totally legit, but Lieutenant Bastion is initiative two. Yeah. So and there's a chance that Lieutenant Bastion is not going to be landing a lot of hits. No, I, I didn't, it doesn't say Lieutenant Bastion. Uh, uh, after a ship at range one to two is dealt a damage card, it doesn't have ah, to be him. So Bastion can just fly around staying out of the way. Yeah, and just be, a, a, I guess, a yeah, deep okay. off. Yeah. yeah, that works, that works. All right, Bastion, yeah, better than I thought. Okay, good. I'm glad to see M9G8 back again as well. So we've got three different initiative levels of generic X-Wing, which... Um, is a is a bit different in second edition. They cut out a lot of the varied levels of generic that first edition had because there were some that didn't always get used. Like mm. the I think it's the Obsidian Squadron pilot, the PS two from first edition Tie Fighter. People would fly the Academy pilot because they were the cheapest. People would fly Black Squadron because they had an EPT. The Obsidian was PS two. No EPT and more expensive than the PS1. It was utterly pointless. <laughs> so and things like there were two levels of generic on the on the Thai Punisher, which hardly ever got used in second edition. There's only one kind of generic. They were just cutting back on the pointlessness. Mm. Mm. So I'm tipping we will see one or maybe two of the generic T70s, not all three. But again, because the faction is so much smaller, they have to provide that many more options. Yeah. And then, oh, the last thing, J. Chris Tubbs. That's as bad as Jack Porkins, but there you go. Yeah, I know. Is, is, is this <laughs> like his nephew? <laughs> Tubbs. <laughs> oh, my God. It, oh, I need to find out if, this guy, if there's actually a picture to this guy. There is, yeah. Well, I'm going to find him. I, lo- I looked him up. His article's only a stub. But the thing that makes me really sad is he... Uh, apparently he died in the movie I didn't even notice but apparently he died in the movie his flavour text is loving oh, wow. father oh come on oh, that that just makes oh. me sad like I don't I don't know oh. who his child is supposed to be so but... this, I can just see there's okay. some like you know on Coruscant some kids going mommy when will daddy be home <laughs> when will Tubbs be home <laughs> oh dear the worst man. part about it he, he, he is an overweight gentleman he's about my size and yeah that's <laughs> just he... not very nice <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know I, I just feel like in 2018 you and this guy aren't overweight like Porkins would have counted as overweight in the <laughs> 70s yeah I yeah. just feel like did you're... they just not like this guy I, was he I just like know. a jerk on set and they're like listen we're changing your name now no I just yeah I just no, feel like JJ was, was probably like hey put person. tubs in the x wing <laughs> <laughs> and the name stuck oh. <laughs> that's brutal <laughs> but alright so tubs after you fully execute a blue maneuver you may choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 so that includes himself if you do, that ship removes one stress token. Okay. So that's kind of similar to AP5 from first edition. So yeah. a ship that K turned or Talon rolled would normally not be able to do that two turns in a row, but you've got Tubbs on side, does that blue move maybe with an aggro mech to make the dial as blue as possible. Um, then you got a ship just T rolling in circles around the opponent, K turning all the time. Um, Taking there's, stress. There's no way to double stress yourself in this, is there? There's no way to, like, give an opponent a stress, get yourself a stress. There's... Oh, no. Like, you're talking about um, the stress bot? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing like that, no. But um, if with Phasma on the board, making people stress... Oh, yeah, um, yeah, Panicked pilot crit, handing out double stress. Bloody Admiral Sloan, mm. handing out double stress. Um, I feel like Tubbs is potentially valuable. At initiative one, mm. Tubbs is probably not trying to um probably not going to contribute heaps to the fight um look it look it depends if you want to fly a squad of t70s and you've got someone there doing a debuff that's okay yeah yeah you know um, like i think it's it's just cla- i think you know if you want something that's got classic rebel synergy yeah oh, and, it, and and remembering as well that the falcon on this faction it's yeah. stressful to rotate the turret yeah Falcon rotates turret, gets stressed. Tubbs moves. Falcon rotates turret, 
and it's gonna the Falcon yeah. double stresses with that title. So you know, Tubbs makes a blue move, then the Falcon makes yeah. a blue move. Tubbs is gonna be valuable. I think yeah. you'll see him for similar reasons that we saw Parva. You know, those little yeah. people just sitting in the back, not doing and a just, lot, but helping just out. Just Parva. Mm. So for those, what again. are you doing back there, Tubbs? My best. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, just looking at the picture of the kids in my X-Wing. I, like, oh, oh, no. I can't oh. wait to get home. <laughs> Man, it's my kid's birthday tomorrow. Come this on. is my last mission before <laughs> There we go. We just wrote his backstory. So oh. we get onto Wikipedia and put it up. <laughs> at what point was he flying towards the new Death Star and with a giant glowing red eye and thought to myself, yeah, today will be a good day. <laughs> Far out. All right. Uh, let's move on to law. <laughs> To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not simply their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy, art. Good evening, citizens. Welcome to Holonic Law. <laughs> this Holonic is your history. <laughs> this Te- is teaching you about your glorious citizens of the Imperials. <laughs> I was going to say, this, this, is go- this would be a very upsetting night if after all this time I find out you guys are better at that than I am. <laughs> That can't be done. <laughs> can't be done. The bus is no, no, the, the bar is, 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 is that's right, exactly. But um, we are talking about one of the, the sort of the premier uh, citizens of the empire. So I am doing a little bit of a biography of a character known as Sienna Ree. She appears in the new expanded universe, so she was created brand new. She had no existence in the pre House of Mouse era. And she appeared in a book called Lost Stars um, by Claudia Gray. Uh, if I get the author correct there. Actually, is she the one who wrote... She's the one who wrote Bloodlines as well, I think. Yes, so Claudia has been doing Star Wars um, novels for a number of while. Uh, for a while. And the Republic Commandos And Republic well. Commandos yeah. as well, oh, which really? is good, yeah. They're good novels. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, so, why? Someone, give her the option to write the script for Last Jedi. Yeah, no, no. And <laughs> t- no, I tell you what... So, and this made me think about it. So I made a bold claim uh, at the start of the show where I said, this is probably one of the sort of few of the um, expanded universe materials, which I think would translate extremely well um, into into film or even television series or something like that as well. Um, it's a, it is probably, this is one of my favorite of the new canon stuff, um, this novel. So the novel's called Lost Stars. It was originally a young adult fiction. It was when I first heard about it, it was uh, it was sort of sold as Romeo and Juliet in the Star Wars universe. And I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would you? Yeah, I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Nothing like teenage tragedy and murder. Yeah, exactly. Stick that in a friendly universe. Yeah, uh, the Star Wars already has Romeo and Juliet. You know, the balcony scene. It's yeah. just Vader throws Palpatine off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful, Palpatine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Sienna Ree was a, a human female. Uh, I'll give you a backstory, but she ended up pl- playing a significant part in sort of different key moments of, of the Star Wars universe. And um, what I re- there's a couple of things I really like about her character and the way um, the author um, wove her into a lot of the broader Star Wars story. So she was kind of there at key moments. But also, I think she introduces an interesting, morally complex character in the Star Wars universe. Because ultimately, she's not an evil person. She's a good person. But she's a very loyal person. And she served the Empire. And she's like, well, this is the government. You know? Well, well all right. Yeah. Listen, thank yeah. God for that. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. for so long, the Imperials have just been like, we are the bad guys. Yeah. Derp, derp. yeah. Look at how evil we are. Derp, yeah. derp. But... It, in in the Star Wars universe, they are the government. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. from their perspective, yeah. the rebels are terrorists. Yes. And she refers to them as terrorists. Well, which is good, because they... Yeah. Yeah. So the, I want complex characters that are in the Imperials that yes. are not bad guys. Please so tell no, me more. No, no, which aren't cartoon villains. Yeah. And they, that's... Like, and, Sontia Fell was started as a cartoon villain, didn't he? Correct. And they, they had... Origi- eventually, yeah. they went like, actually, this character's pretty cool. Maybe we should make him a rebel. They yeah. always turn rebel. Yeah. <sighs> so, anyway, so her and she was also... So, her story is, is paired with that of another um, character called Thane Kyrell, who actually is also an X-Wing. He appears as an arc 
pilot. So they both grew up together. T sixty five pilot in oh, second edition. A second, a second edition as well. Mm. Sorry. So he's in there as well. So let me. I'll tell you the bit of the story. So um, she was born in nineteen BBY. That's before the Battle of Yavin. And she was born on a planet called Jel- Jalukan. I think that's correctly pronounced, uh, Jalukan. Um, and she grew up in a rural vi- uh, village. She sort of, and she was what known on that planet as a first waver. So going back maybe a thousand years or so, these were the original colonizers of this planet in the outer rim. And they had a pretty hard scrabble life. It was pretty tough going. And then a little bit later, a new fresh wave of immigrants arrived, a colonists arrived called Second Wavers. And this ended up creating a sort of a caste system or a class system uh. on the planet. So she was in the sort of what they called a valley dweller. So her and her family and her people lived in the valleys. So this planet kind of was quite mountainous, quite sort of, you know, sort of, um, you know, quite picturesque and beautiful kind of a way. But you had a, a sort of a, a sort of a population who was sort of living down on the in the valley region and sort of regarded as sort of backwards peasants, and you had another class of people living sort of higher up in the cities and stuff like that as well. So, so the people yeah. who could trace their lineage back yeah. to the first people to yeah. come to the planet, they yeah. were considered inferior yeah. to the newer ones. Yes. Oh, okay. oh wow. That's yeah, because that resulted. Of- for, yeah, that resulted. There was like a civil war in their history, and these people got exiled down to the bottom. They said, "Be gone, rebels, exiles." Be gone. Yes. Native inhabitants of this world. Is Pretty that, much. I was about to say, in real life, the people who rock up second usually try to take over. So. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's that kind of thing. So and she says she grew up there. Um, so when she was born, she was actually born with a twin sister, but the t- twin sister died at birth. Rough. Uh, yeah, yeah. God, well. I got dark real quick. Yeah, it got real dark <laughs> real quick. Anyway, but she carried with her this idea that she had to live her life not just for herself, but for her twin sister who had died. And she actually had this little saying to herself. She would say, see this through my eyes or something like this. Like, So she would be in a way speaking to her like ancestor or sort of a dead sister in that way as well. But anyway, so she grew up in this sort of environment, pretty tough going, all the rest of it. And then one day when she's eight years old, um, the family decide to go to the capital city because there's like this big festival on as well. And this is the time when the empire has actually achieved power. Palpatine's there, all the rest of it. She goes, and the other reason why people are having celebration because there's this imperial visitor, this like this dignitary, um, and it is Grand Moff Tarkin. Nah, sick. <laughs> so he's, he's visiting the planet. So uh, Sienna rocks up, she's walking around, and then her eye is caught by a TIE fighter. See, this girl takes after my heart. She's, <laughs> she looks at the TIE she fighter it, yeah. and she goes, that is cool. What is that? That is a plywood <laughs> box that'll get you killed when you try to take it into space. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. Don't, don't, anyway. So she's, Don't get in that. It doesn't have life support. <laughs> Shield? <laughs> don't need that. We've got a thousand more TIE fighters. That's right, exactly. Anyway, so she's checking this out, and she can also see Star Destroyers. So, again, she's come from a poor environment. She comes to... This is the first time she's pretty much gone to the city. She's amazed by all this kind of stuff. Anyway, bunch of bullies rock up. These are second wave kids, and they're, like, just having a go at her. They're just being assholes. They're, like, starting to pick on her. And then, anyway, another kid, another second wave of kids, see what's going on, and he jumps in, and they start having a fight. And this is Thane Kyrell. Mm. So he jumps in because he's sense of, you know, uh, what's right and wrong. He is quite a moral person and quite a moral character in that respect. And they start having a fight. They're obviously going to lose. They're outnumbered. But then Tarkin turns up around the corner with some stormtroopers, scatters the bullies, um, and sort of pretty much puts a into it and he's like ho, 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 what are you young with the little scampery things up to mm. um, has a chat to the kids and he says to Thane I was like you know um, that wasn't tactically very sound mm. and Thane goes well I could see you were coming so you knew you'd intervene and Tarkin's like I like these I like, kids I like this guy <laughs> I like these kids and so what Tarkin does and I would love to see this he sort of starts talking to these two kids um, and he's like Anyway, so they see a Lambda shuttle, so he takes them into a Lambda shuttle and he lets them play around with that and they're scampering all over the place and he's talking to them, they're letting him sitting on his knee, so it's like Tarkin's being like this grandfatherly kind of... <laughs> you know, it's actually funny, you might, yeah. you might think that, right? if, yeah. if you read the, the Tarkin book, have you read the Tarkin book? Yes. Okay, you, you know how like 
forward thinking and years. calculating. So yes, just listening to that yeah. from Tarkin's point of view, he would have done that to those two kids, and those two kids would have told two kids, and yes. those two kids will tell two kids, and all exactly. of a sudden you have a whole generation of kids wanting to join the army for yeah. ten minutes of his time. In, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he says to them, "You know what you should do? You should join the Imperial Navy." Oh, there you go. <laughs> So these two kids are, are mildly impressed by all this. They become good friends and they spend their teen years teaching each other um, how to fly. Now, um, Thane comes from a rather rich aristocratic family. He has access to like flight simulators and stuff like that. So he lets her use them, etc., etc. Um, and then they start actually training um, at the like the local Imperial Academy. Mm. So they're aiming to like join the navy because actually if you recall in earlier episodes we talked about this but actually getting into the imperial navy was actually really hard yeah you had to take a lot of tests old eu or new eu as well new eu as well okay yeah so even though there are when we had this conversation about yep. like, there, there's like tens of thousands of tie pilots yep. but if the if the standard to entry is so high how is that possible it's because yep. they have literally millions of worlds yeah trillions upon trillions of people who want to be pilots yeah, yeah. Mm. So so even, can, even though they take yeah. the top 10% that's still millions of people exactly because exactly. I think I think I read somewhere once yeah. that the Star Wars galaxy is considered to be larger than our galaxy yes so there'd be more people in yeah. it yeah so well, it's colonized and got space either. travel blah, 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 and all the rest yeah. of it. Our galaxy are our solar system. Obviously, more yeah, okay. glides in our solar system. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. Um, so they spend their teenage years doing that, um, going through this imperial training thing, and eventually they pass all these tests. Um, and then it turns out that both of them have excelled and they are admitted to the Imperial Academy on Coruscant, which is the premier academy in the all the empire. Mm. So they're off to there to learn how to um, be Imperial Naval officers. So off they go. Um, Sienna is there. It's the first time she's been outside the, from the outer rim. So it's the first time both of them seem like the core worlds. And so they're just blown away. They think it's amazing. And you think about it, you're young, impressionable kids. You know, you're smart, you're driven, you're intelligent. You've been rewarded for that. And you're kind of like, and you've made it into this sort of, you know, elite academy and everything. They're like, yeah, this is great. It's going well. Wow. Um, it must be like people going from Sydney and seeing Melbourne for the first time and thinking, wow, this place is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is so much better than Sydney. <laughs> yeah. What's this thing? It's a, it's a, a latte? What's this? <laughs> what? The club stay open after 10 p.m.? Yeah, so like, what is this green stuff? Smashed out <laughs> anyway. Smashed out I cannot afford a house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, I have, uh, yes, anyway, that's an Australian joke. That's an Australian that's... joke. You can't, you can't buy a house because of all the smashed over you're eating. That's right. That, was our, tre- that was our ministry, Minister of Treasuries, wasn't it? A treasurer at one point, yeah. It's just an old white guy being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> God, I loved it. <laughs> anyway. So they go there, so they, they hit the study pretty hard. Um, they both excel. Um, Sienna is very conscientious, very hard working, um, and they pass through a number of tests. And as they're going through this training thing, the intake shrinks. So eventually, you know, people fail. A lot of people fail these academies. So, but they're making it through okay. Eventually one day, um, they're asked to perform a test um, and they're doing this separately. And what they're meant, meant to do is fix sort of like the damaged lasers on some TIE fighters and they're supposed to take broken parts and bits and pieces and all that and get it working. Um, Sienna gets it right, but it turns out Thane, his malfunctions, it just doesn't work. The Imperial training, um, the trainer checks the sort of Thane's laser and looks at the logs and it says that Sienna had sabotaged his laser. Oh, the dick. Did she? We'll get to that. Oh, oh. suspension. <laughs> and cliffhanger. Join me for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Which is starting now. Now. <laughs> um, oh my God, I'm going I'm to totally put the end credits. So it's <laughs> <laughs> this has been Hell of a Pilot, episode 43. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, cut a long story short. Turns out the two have a conversation about this. Um, they have a kind of a falling out about it because they kind of accuse each other. They kind of think somebody else did it, etc., etc. Um, anyway, it turns out it creates a rift between these two. But at the same time, they've also been um, both feeling independently a uh, sense of strong sense of attraction. 
to each other as well. So it's kind of like that classic Romeo and Juliet. She's from the poor part of town. He's from, he's a that restricted... is not classic Romeo and Juliet. Well, they were both very rich. Well, that's true, actually. Well, it's a well a- every other yeah. love story aside from Romeo and Juliet. Okay, actually well, no. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, no, you're completely right. Lady and the Tramp. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a classic, and it is Disney. It Disney. is Disney. <laughs> Oh my god, I just called her a tramp. <laughs> Thanks, the tramp, yes. Now, <laughs> yeah, the tramp, the tramp is the guy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's yeah. the lady. And yeah, so it's the opposite. It's he, the he's a lady and she's a tramp. <laughs> the That's <gentleman>. harsh. <laughs> 2018, come on, get with the times. <laughs> I forgot what we were even talking about. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, also during this time, Sienna also makes friends with a couple of other people, um, including another um, Imperial trainee, a female named Jude, who she becomes close friends with. Jude is kind of like a science nerd. She's kind of like, again, very bright, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, eventually, um, these guys, Sienna and Thane, have a bit of a kind of a falling out. Like, they don't, they have a bit of a fight. And until they get to the point where they're graduating, they kind of wear, they keep away from each other. But eventually they go, ah, you know what? We're, we're actually friends. We actually like each other. All this kind of stuff. Um, and they actually, they get together in the in the sort of uh, romantic sense. Mm. So all the rest of it. Good. Now it turns out the laser incident, as it's called, was actually the trainer had actually done that. Oh, the dick. Yeah. That was part of their training program. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Because they didn't want people, they only wanted people to be loyal to the empire. Okay. They didn't want to have people to have loyalty to others. They didn't want to have people loyalty to their home world and that kind of stuff. They're just like, they're just, with they're people's just not minds. really big on maternity leave. No. <laughs> just want to encourage anybody out there who <laughs> likes to say the empire are the good guys to listen very carefully to what was just said. <laughs> Anyway, Sienna graduates and she is then assigned to an Imperial Star Destroyer, the Devastator, which is Darth Vader's personal flagship. What, the, the, the really big one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So she's... And it's modelled on the tabletops for Amato, which is like yes. a metre long. Yes. So she's, she's based on that and um, she is present... Um, at the capture of Princess Leia's um, frigate, so she's the one actually operating the tractor beam. So she pulls in. She's sort oh, of one oh, of the officers. There you go. Yeah. So she's like, "Yep, that's fine. I'm doing all that kind of stuff." She's also one of the officers. You know, when they're shooting off the um, pod, the life pods. It's all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, the first one goes. There's two life pods that are ejected. One goes out. That's shot down. The second one goes out. As we know, no life signs. It's actually the droids. Yeah. Um, so she's actually one of the people. But that always confused me. Like, yeah. why would they're lasers? They don't have ammunition. Just shoot the damn thing. Yeah, it's like why? You're not wasting anything. They're, yeah. Yeah, it's like they could have if they left that out. It would have been fine. Yeah, because if the movie was just the escape pod flies away, and the question of whether or not the escape pods could be shot was never addressed, like we would just we could just imagine that the escape pod got away and nobody noticed. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, they did notice, but it was too late. Yeah. But by including that. That one Stop. second of dialogue they actually make it worse. That's yeah. right. It's, it's like you're not helping here. Yeah, that was one of the things that Lucas should have done in the special edition was take that out. Yeah. What not put in all those friggin' See, I, I would, I would, yeah, I would understand. Like, even if they're like fire, still firing lasers at different life pods, mm-hmm. um, but they were not left. So, yeah. yeah, it's like I understand. Like, you don't want to get like a. a a, what a word like calculator firing solution for every life pod that goes out if there's yeah. a thousand life pods but there's literally one yeah so like just lazy yeah yes just two real lazy people the, the, the office guns. is like I'm gonna have to write up a report I'm gonna have to oh. <laughs> you know it's just discharge pay- more paperwork <laughs> and discharge in the line of duty God, yeah. just leave it it's there's, fine there's actually uh, the, a book I've told you guys about before a certain point of view yes I want to read that the collection of short yeah. stories there's actually a story in that book that deals with this yeah the, the person who doesn't fire the shot has yeah. to come up with an elaborate scenario for how to not get in trouble for <laughs> <the movie. laughs> 
it's a really good book <laughs> because that is one of those for the for those kind of classic moments where the entire history of the galaxy could have gone either way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that, can, can you please tell me? This, I, I really want to know what was the solution that he came up with not to fire on a, a life sign. Uh, it's pre- you. You probably better read right, it. Like, I, I, I would it. do a bad job of saying what happened. Okay. Anyway. So, um, yep, so she doesn't get to have to write up a report about not shooting, so she's all happy. She's wandering the halls of the Star Destroyer, bumps into Tarkin, and Tarkin's like, Hey, I remember you. Good work, you. You're ace. And she's like, Thanks, Tarkin. I'm doing really good for myself. And now what they're doing, they're actually heading off to the Peace Sphere, as we like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a new assignment for you. That's the Peace Sphere. I love that name. <laughs> So, uh, for listeners who are new to the, the, this is one of our end jokes. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we don't have to explain the joke. <laughs> yeah, it's I, the Peace Sphere. Yeah, it's not the Death Star, see? So, Holland yeah. News named it the Peace Sphere. <laughs> in, in, one of, in one of our earliest, like the, the second oh, or second. third yeah, even yeah. episodes of the show, yeah. as a joke, I imagined that as Imperial propaganda, instead of Death Star, they would call it something nice, yeah. like Peace Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we've just kept saying it for years. <laughs> just to Imagine citizens looking up and going, "Look, it's the peace sphere, it's the glorious yeah. peace sphere, yeah. shining yeah. like the new moon." What, whatever the whatever the Star Wars equivalent of Cat Stevens is writing That's... a song about it, yeah. peace sphere. Yeah. Join the peace sphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. sorry. Right. Anyway, continuing on. At the same time, I just thought I'd throw it as an aside that Thane Kyrell has actually been assigned to the peace sphere um, as his assignment. So they get to the Star Destroyer, gets to this peace sphere, they hand over the Rebel plans. All that stuff stops to happen. Um, and it's at this moment that also that Sienna witness, witnesses the destruction of Alderaan. Okay. So it's that pivotal moment there. Um, Sienna also has a friend, uh, a guy called Nash, who is actually from Alderaan. Mm. And he's is, like... Is he in the Empire? Yes. He's an officer. And he's like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. And he's like really shook to the core. And if I remember uh, another thing, and Sienna's like, what's going on here? Like, it's like, we just murdered millions of people. So there's a bit of a sort of a story about them trying to come to terms with it. Eventually, they all justify it to themselves saying, look, we had to do it because it would prevent further deaths down the line Mm -hmm. by, you know, you know, a new war starting and that kind of thing as well. Wars must be swift and brutal. Yes. Lest there be more bloodshed. Yes. That's right. I need to find that. Find the person who wrote that. Yep. Yep. Um, anyway, so Alderaan's destroyed, <sighs> Alderaan chonks everywhere. Um, at the same time, Sienna heads back to the Star Destroyer, she heads off. Thane actually escapes death because he's sent to Dantooine to check out for the old Imperial base, if you remember episode four. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the. Dantooine? Dantooine. Yep. Dantooine? Yes. Anyway, so that happens, she heads off, Battle of Yavin happens. The rebel and terrorists destroy the peace sphere. Um, Heroically. Heroically. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And at that point, the Empire is in absolute chaos. Um, What happens then is Sienna's friend, Jude, the science nerd, she was actually on the peace sphere. She dies. Um, And it turns out she'd actually written a report to the, um, the, the officers saying, hey, there's a bit of a weakness in the, the Death Star, if you look at this tube over here in the in the oh, trench, yeah, right. but they ignored it. Oh. <laughs> it's built in redundancy. They yeah, see yeah. This issue. yeah, yeah. Then they can afford it. Then they'd be like, oh no, we need another one. This yeah, one's, this one's got a hole in it. Yeah. So, anyway, that happens. Um, one of the other missions that she does is that she actually helps rescue Vader because he's actually stranded on the on the Yavin Moon. So she pops down and, and picks him up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump a little ahead a little bit because a lot more stuff happens in the story. But essentially, what happens? Her and Thane get together again. Um, he's actually left the Empire because he's disgusted by Alderaan and he's seen other brutal treatment of other populations by the Empire. And he joins the Rebels and he becomes a um, a, a Rebel um, fighter pilot. Um, fast forward eventually to the Battle of Jakku. So we oh, okay. had. So, well, actually, no, not Battle Jakku. Let's go to Endor. So, when the Peace Fear is there to do the rescue mission for the Ewoks who were starving, mm. <laughs> it was actually a humanitarian mission. It was. 
<laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but in such a good way. Star- <laughs> the starving natives. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're, they're kind of like they're sending down food packages. <laughs> to bring uh, order to a world of chaos. That's right, right. exactly. Anyway, she's present at that battle there as well. She's flying a TIE interceptor. Um, she tries her best. Um, she narrowly misses shooting down Arvel Krennic, or you know the guy who flies the A-wing into the Devastator. Oh, yeah. She yeah. just misses out on stopping him as well. And she's like, no! Anyway, force forward to the Battle of Jakku. The Empire's devastated. It's in turmoil. It's the final last stand of the, of the Empire there. She has actually been promoted to the captain of a Star Destroyer because oh, wow. there's, she's only 25 at this time, but she's been a, a fantastic officer. But the ranks of the Empire have been so decimated, they're like, we just need anybody <laughs> to, to, you know. Anyone, ex- yeah. well, she, what, uh, 19 at the Battle of... Uh, of Yavin, yeah. Of Yavin, so she's been in combat pretty much for seven years straight. Yeah, yeah. okay, I could, I could see her. Yeah, yeah, her, so her yeah. Ship roll. Yeah, so, so that's right. So she, you know, um, so battle turns badly for the Imperials, they start to lose. Um, her Star Destroyer is badly crippled, um, but the Rebels then decide to capture it. They send aboard a boarding team. Who happens to be part of the boarding team? But good old Thane. So Sienna, who is remaining loyal to the Empire, is going, that's it. I'm going to fly the Star Destroyer into the ground and destroy it and commit an act of suicide because I don't want the Rebels to have it. Mm. But Thane manages to come in, stop the ship plunging into Jakku, and... They manage to get off the Star Destroyer, and eventually, Sienna is taken captive by the Rebels. There is a crashed Star Destroyer on Jakku, though, because that we yeah. you know from Force Awakens is yeah. un- an unrelated thing. I think it's another one. I'm not sure. I have I to double check on was, that. I think there was quite a few. Yeah, a lot oh, yeah, of it. It was a big battle. Yeah, well. it was raining Star Destroyers. It's, it's very, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It's a very iconic, yeah, like part of the Star Wars universe now. The Battle of Jakku. Yeah, it's, it's huge. That mm. that Star Destroyer. There. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry, I did. No, no, no. It's all it's, it's all good. So I was just trying to wrap it up a bit quicker. Um, Thane and Sienna decide to be remain friends. And her story ends at the point where she's like, she's not happy. She accepts that the government has changed. She's accepted that the Empire lost the war. But in her opinion, the the rebels were terrorists. And they're like, you know, and sort of her sense of honor and duty has been compromised. The funny thing is, though, she actually does live on in another way. She becomes an icon and hero in the First Order because everybody thinks she actually died on the Battle of Jakku. Oh. And she's posthumously awarded like a medal for bravery and service and all the rest of it, and then held up to be the very model of what an imperial officer should be. So what what happens to her then that nobody finds out that she's still alive? She just That's said, where her story ends. So the oh, so we don't know yet. There'll we don't know yet. It could continue. Then. Couldn't anyway. Okay. Anyway, so that was hopefully that wasn't too long for people. No, that that was. That was <laughs> doubly handy as well because yeah. ever since second edition came out I've been wondering who the hell Thane Kyrell is yeah but okay so that's so that's, that's awesome it. yeah Thank you so that. that's it no worries yeah I enjoyed that no alrighty uh, let's wrap it up why you stuck up half-witted scruffy looking nerf her it's the end of the night but before we move on to any shout outs we're actually going to talk about x for it <laughs> oh yeah the game <laughs> oh yeah we, we do that <laughs> I begged him. I pleaded him <laughs> to add, add another section because we haven't had the three of us together since second edition came out to no. just talk about playing a little bit. So this episode's going to be a tiny bit longer, which you have to deal with. Mm. Yeah. Or enjoy. Depends on your mind. Depends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've had quite a bit of fun with this new, with 2.0 and the, all the new changes and stuff to it. I still haven't quite got around like remembering force abilities mm. I mean it's such a, it's such a basic thing but I don't know just from it never from basically an eternal focus once but then I don't know I've always had trouble with that so I might that's why I'm sort of looking forward to uh, doing maybe a two ship build mm. and going back to basics and just like okay let's just relearn how to fly these damn things yeah um, look, I have not. I've only played, I've played less than half a dozen games because I had a lot of life busy stuff at the moment. Um, but the games I've played, I've enjoyed. Um, I like. I like the fact that things um, have been stripped back to the basics. 
Um, I think a lot of the pilots are interesting. And I think, particularly at the moment, what I'm really enjoying is just flying a whole lot of stuff and not worrying about the meta or winning or anything. It's just like, I'm going to try this. This looks like fun. Mm. Um, and I've been flying the Defenders. God, they're so good to fly in second edition. And now there's only two of them on the board. Thank God yes. for that. I have flown a double Defender build and I really enjoyed it. Just, just yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, you, you were good with that. And it's, it's kind of freaky being... A- on the receiving end of a second edition defender it's like okay this thing moves in a straight line as it always does except now it's boosting no <laughs> no no I don't like it go back we must go back <laughs> back foul beast Lucky, I do believe you've had the most experience of all yes. this so my favourite ship in second edition get ready for this mm-hmm. is the U-Wing Yes. Ah, I've heard. I've, I've heard which, you talk about this. <clears throat> which it surprised me. Um, it's good because the there were some things that really had to change on the U wing, mostly to do with the title, the the pivot wing. Mm-hmm. So now, and this is the same with the server motor S foils. Now it's when you activate not just at the start of everything, giving away exactly what you're going to do. Yeah, it was the tell was the thing that killed it. And the rotating 90 degrees. Yeah. Mm. That's huge. Just just turning 90 degrees without having to move. Oh, yeah? It's massive. I was play, I played a game with Mike the other day. Yeah, you, he, he, you with, with his, my With butt. his double defenders. Yeah. I, I didn't kick your butt, man. Okay. It wasn't like that. Yeah. But, but the tie defender, the white K turn. Yeah. Right? Mm. Tie Defender charges into your face and then just white K turns behind you and then you have to red K turn to turn around. Basically, the Tie Defender just jumps forwards and back yeah. and in front, 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 like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And it just whittles you away until you're gone. But the, 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 and if it, you know, if it has to turn around you, it, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit sluggish doing that. The, the pivot wing literally just yeah. pivoting mm. because you're not moving. You just kind of get yourself a good place on yeah. the board and just kind of turn around like a turret yeah that's and that's cool. what it, that's what it was so the like people who fly the defender and what i like about it is that the for me the key is you fly it fast fly do a strafe fly past them turn around and come at them again from behind but that pivoting turret u-wing neutralized that to many respects could you only do that for one turn at a time or well, it's a red. It's a red move, yeah. so you mm. can't do it two goes in a row. Mm. But you've got your guns on, yeah. But the advanced sensors makes a pretty big difference because mm. it doesn't matter if you do a red maneuver if you've had your action first. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. My the only U wing pilot I've flown so far is Benthic Two Tubes, but him just flicking out focus tokens yeah. all the time yeah. is is pretty massive. And flew flew Wolf Warrior, yeah. The fact that the Ozatark has the red stop now. Yeah. Red stop is like a red stop is basically as good as a K turn. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't have to turn around if you can sort of make the opponent fly past you. Mm. Yeah. And with, with two tubes giving him a focus token to use, and I had Magva Yarrow on there. So a one agility ship is probably going to take damage, which gives him a target lock. And then the focus and the target lock from two tubes being there. I've written another version of that list that has Leia in it. Mm. So, just want to be able to make these two ships just completely stop, make the other squad fly past them, and those moves be white. Haven't tried that yet, but that's that's something I want to do. And um, scum, scum is fun to fly as well. I've flown a little bit of scum. Triple zero is a pretty massive, pretty Triple massive. Triple zero is a great crew card, really powerful. He's very popular at the moment as yeah. well. It's kind of funny. The first time I ever flew triple zero, my opponent had triple zero as well. Now in Australia, triple zero is the emergency <laughs> services number. So in the US you have nine one one. I yeah. think in the UK it's nine nine nine. Yeah. In Australia that's triple zero. So I'm playing this game and he's like, okay, first there's my triple zero, then there's your triple zero, and I'm like, oh my god, is somebody having a heart attack? Or is <laughs> <it one?" laughs> um, but yeah, the the kind of mind games you have to play with the other. You know, I play with the other person. Like, okay, do I let you modify a dice, or do I get stressed, or what? I'm putting. I've been putting triple zero on Koshka Frost, the, the fire spray pilot. Mm. So she gets to re-roll attack or defense against a stressed pilot. So if you get into range one, triple zero is like, okay, either let me re-roll when I attack you, or give me a calculate token to modify a dice. 
it's your choice i'll wait yeah, yeah. look i've flown against fire spray fire sprays are fantastic in the in 2.0 oh my god the t-roll the yeah yeah but also being on the medium base yeah huge and so i think so for me a couple of things i think all the look limited and other people have had a lot more experience and i guess you know be i'll be you know it might be interesting here like on the facebook page let us know things that you really enjoy um you know what i really liked um like even though i didn't win the game i flew a lambda shuttle that was the mvp just having the rear arc <laughs> yeah i bet yeah, yeah just, just just bet. just you know um i flew palpatine very underwhelming i think i'll put him back in the folder i think darth vader as a crew card is very powerful um yeah, yeah. the the one now i don't normally yeah. do this but the one now I'm, and i'm not getting the nerf bat out yet yeah but one thing that makes me kind of unhappy is the combination of vader crew and duke yes vader is probably not expensive enough even though he's 16 points because fifth brother's the most expensive at the moment so yeah. is he yeah okay um, i thought i, I, I don't know last but I anyway but vader vader either just does an automatic damage in firing arc admittedly vader just does an automatic damage and then if if you don't have a token then if vader's on a ship with duke mm -hmm. then it changes one of your defense dice to an eye and if mm -hmm. you don't have a token then you can't change it so that damage is going through and if you do have a token to prevent duke from working vader will just take it and then duke will work again so vader is essentially guaranteed damage either one or two and that's i didn't enjoy that <laughs> well yeah oh that's mm. So that's that's the one that I'm worried about at the moment. Well, it's a good combination. It's a very good combination. It's especially good on the Phantom at the moment because I think it's Whisper pretty much always has evade tokens. Yeah, Whisper. Yeah. I haven't flown it. I'm I'm actually keen. The next build I want to play around with is a classic Whisper Decimator, and put Vader on the Desi. Vader um, on the Desi, not on, yeah. on Whisper. No, uh, maybe on Desi. Vader's popular on the Lambda at the moment because he has two arcs to work with. True. Lambda's mm -hmm. not going to get evades for Duke, though. No, that's the thing. True. Yeah. But no, I want a Lambda shuttle. Yeah, Vader and a Lambda, or Vader and the Desi, um, I might do. So anyway, but look, um, it's lots of fun. I think it's good. I think it's... I, I'm, the only thing which I'm um, having struggled with is I've just had really no time to mm. play the game. So mm -hmm. hopefully things... Get better. All uh, right. So, do we tell them the big news before or after the shoutouts? After the shoutouts. After the shoutouts. Okay. All right. So, everybody gather around and observe the notes that I have written. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. All right. Who's first? You. Me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, JC113, Fosnoff, Alex Memegia. Ez Fantas Podcast, Dicop Magazine, Dr. RK Mother, Archangel Spiv, and Joker D. By the way, I know what your avatar picture is, the Raven Wing. I used to paint those when I played 40K. They're new followers and likers on Podbean. Yay! Yay. James Khan, Giles Palmer, Gary Conley, Andrew Fern. New followers on the YouTubers. Oh, good. Yes. We just... Ah, uh, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Yes. I think we're up to like oh, 80 subscribers yeah. on YouTube. Want to break the 100? Oh, nice. I think I think Owen will like this one. I'll read this yeah. one. <laughs> Joel H said, Owen's video about how to paint X-Wing minis was hilarious and breathtaking. Well, that makes sense because yeah. Owen is hilarious and breathtaking. Oh, That's I know. true. <laughs> my, my beard does, does have a, <laughs> a breathtaking air to it. I, love, I actually really enjoyed um, doing that video because it was the first time I've ever sort of done video editing before and it's very difficult. <laughs> I'm just going to stick to audio editing because my god, video editing is just it's next level. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Um, our our old mate Bruno, Yay, from, Bruno. From up in Canada he, he shared one of our most recent episodes on the Facebook page X-Wing Podcast Central so thanks for that by the way and you should look out for his Lawmaster quizzes at Millennium Condor but if you go to the X-Wing Podcast Central Facebook pages yeah speaking of podcasts do you guys remember like a year ago this really nice lady yes. shared shared our podcast to yes. a website great australian pods yes. yeah where they just store podcasts that yeah. are made in australia all different topics 
and she said that someone had told her to do that and I asked who and she said I don't remember <laughs> and this was ages ago she's at it again she shared us today nice. again on the same so yeah uh, if you're in Australia or if you're not because that's how the internet works if you go to great Australian pods mm-hmm. you can find podcasts about things mm. go there uh, Joshua Fink uh, one of our, our newer listener says she really enjoyed a Guri oh. law segment no question that, that's a typo he's a he so I don't know why I, I wrote she yeah I mm. don't know why I said she when it, the name was Joshua well, I mean, I wrote she, it's there, but I shouldn't have. Uh, is it? Is this the guy who was like, who was making jokes like, stop talking about Guri. Stop looking at pictures of Guri and talking about the show. <laughs> Listen, if you've seen Guri, you'll know why you're looking at Guri. Gu- Guri's is such a 90s comic girl. Oh my God, that was such a good joke. And I, and I cut it. Um, I, I turned off the, the show. I stopped recording just as it was said. It was beautiful. And you said... You said, oh, come on, it's yeah. so funny. Yeah. It's, I'm doing it. And she just says, oh, why does, why does Guri have shin pads? And Mars is like, uh, Ian. Ian, yeah, of course. Yeah. And Ian's like, this is, the, this is the PG show, guys. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. I just walked into it. It was the dumbest <laughs> question I could possibly have asked. <laughs> Um, in, the, in the last episode we shouted out to Rod Terhorst from the Netherlands and he sent us a message to say he really appreciated that but also that's not how you pronounce his name but he didn't tell us how you are supposed to pronounce it <laughs> so now that I've butchered it twice man you want to maybe get in touch and tell us how to say it properly we do know the next, sh- the next shout out will be to Rood? some guy in the Netherlands <laughs> Hey, you in the Netherlands. Um, Ian Glasson, a uh, new follower on Facebook. Yeah, and he's from Queensland. Your neck of the woods, mate. Yes. Um, and he liked Blitz in Space. For those of you who don't know, Blitz in yes. Space was, is the fiction, which is good. It's good stuff. It's lots it, of fun. It is fun to do. Um, we're working on episode four. Nice Still, done. It's just one of those things that it, like I want to I wanna say to you guys, hey, look, it'll be out next week. But listen, I don't know when it'll be out. It takes, <laughs> it takes a very long time. I mean, look, can I say the sound editing you do is really good. So yes, it takes Thanks. time. It does. It's, Thank it's you. really I think, good. I think I, I did work it out one day to be like every minute of the show takes about an hour for me to edit. Ooh. Because just the way everything pieces together so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it takes me like 20 hours to do one yeah who has that kind of time <laughs> Jacob Steele likes the title of the last episode because he loves Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy who doesn't I yeah. mean who does come on that's a classic I can't yeah. resist a 42 yes. I'm um, really disappointed that I didn't realise it was episode 42 when I jumped <laughs> straight to 43 because I would have been all on that like <laughs> like I don't know chocolate on peanut butter because my god I love that book and I, I love that audio drama it is just it's just yeah the audio drama is one of the classics yeah. oh yeah yep um, I, I wanted to shout out personally to Kevin and Louie who are, who are listeners of ours uh, Kevin I don't know where you're from but as our listeners might know Louie lives up in, in Canberra and these guys came to Melbourne to see PAX and they came to our booth to say hi, because that was something that we suggested that people should do. Now, these are guys I'd never met in person before, mm-hmm. and our instructors are the people who, who, were, who were running the area where we worked. One thing they told us at the start was that every time somebody came to our table, we should introduce ourselves, tell them our name. I'll be honest, I wasn't doing that. Mm. But so, no. so at one point, up comes this guy, holds out his hand to, to shake hands, and he says, Lachlan? And I was like, yes, also, how? <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, but we, should, we should be used to the phone that we have, because everywhere we go, we're <laughs> like, hey, yeah. you from Hell's so, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and then this this uh, this person who I'd never met, but was incredibly friendly, told me that he was Louis from Canberra, and that, yeah, Kevin did the same thing, so, yeah, that was great. Oh, yeah, just Louis, mate. Uh, <laughs> so... He came up well, while I was introducing, uh, I was talking to someone else about it, and he was he was hanging around. I was like, oh, yeah, it's fine. He's a, a spectator. He took some photos. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Um, he took a photo of me, and which was, <laughs> it's a really great photo. Thank you. But say hello, man. Like, I know you. Like, you're one of our listeners. I would have been like, oh, mate, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Wait, so he didn't tell he you? He did not tell me. <laughs> <laughs> he did not tell me he was Louis. Because Louis he posted the picture of, of yeah. Owen on the Facebook page. Like, with very little comment other than saying, you know, this is a photo of Owen. And I thought that, I thought that maybe he had talked to you no. about it. 
<laughs> that was the he first. just took a photo and didn't introduce himself, and I was like, mate. Oh. It, it, it's funny because it was that was the very first person I was in. I was for the first time of the whole packs that I was. Uh, you know, showing the game to. So, and I do know in packs and stuff, a lot of photos are taken. He, I think he was like one of the only few, one of the few people, but he was the first person to come along, start taking photos. I'm like, oh yeah, taking photos of the board game there. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, he was taking a photo of me. It's a good photo, mate. Um, thanks. <laughs> I believe it's breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing on the list was to remind Mike. Yes. The Christopher Spenner sent us a message a little while ago that said Defenders are the best ship in second edition. Oh. And first. But <laughs> well, well, I will yeah, have you, but... son. I will I will go you. <laughs> Bar none is just the best ship. Uh. They are actually you know what they are pretty good. And actually um, the point cost is actually completely appropriate. So I'm good I'm loving mm. it. So it's I'm all just good. glad there's not three. Like that would that did my head in. Yeah, three would be just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and, so, and yeah. thinking about it, in that game that we played and you yeah. had the advanced sensors on, yeah, yeah, we'll say, okay, not only can I scream towards you and boost to the left yes. if you're not quite in arc, I can do that before I move if I want to. <laughs> Actually, advanced sensors is my favourite upgrade on the Defender. Advanced sensors, Duke, is the combo I've been using in my class. I think like advanced it. sensors it's, is just a really good card. It is it? powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I recommend... Anyway, um, so, yeah, so now the do now we the, do we take oh, now the other thing? Oh, the now the if you now. made it, if you made it to the end of the show, we <laughs> have boy, do we have a surprise for you? Oh yeah, didn't say it was a good surprise. <laughs> um, so we've been doing this show now for two years. Mm-hmm. We're up to episode uh, forty three, right. and at forty, we're not even no, uh, don't listen to me. Uh, at forty four, we will. This will be our last show. Uh, we, each of us, have have things happening. We're in a different part of our life. Uh, Lockie is, you're getting married. I'm getting married. Mike, not getting married. <laughs> but still, it's still things. Um, so, I hope everyone has enjoyed listening to Hell of a Pilot. Uh, we've absolutely had loads of fun yes. making it. And it, it's going to be sad. To, to see it end but this is yeah uh, so what's happening uh, we haven't actually spoken about this so we'll do it on air what's happening with the Facebook page um I haven't decided yet <laughs> <laughs> um, no pressure <laughs> all all three of us have have made things for the Facebook and you know if you've sent us messages and made comments on Facebook um, it it responds anonymously, but you would have talked to any one of the three of us. Yeah. But I've, I've I've been doing a lot of it, the yeah. Facebook. Um, you know, I feel like it's a pretty good accomplishment to be the second largest X-Wing meme page behind Dank X-Wing memes. And, like, they're the original and the best, so no shame being behind those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the fact there's a little community on there. Like, it's not just about memes and stuff like people talk to us on there and we talk i just i just love that people talk to us from all over the place and i'd kind of like to keep that going yeah but i would like to keep it going too uh again we are talking literally about this live yeah. um i think i i would like to keep it going and we would, might we might change it to uh, change the name of the of the page to like a meme related just, just take the podcast bit out just call, yeah. keep calling it hell of a pilot hell of a pilot memes because yeah. we've built a brand yeah <laughs> Hello, Pilot Star Wars. Um, we will, as far as we're aware, we're going to keep the show running yes. for another year. It will uh, be available still, yes. It will be available for another year. We will finish Blitz in Space, mm-hmm. uh, all five or six episodes of it, because we have an ending to it. We're just working on it. Uh, but other than that, the podcast will be coming to an end. Thank you, listeners, who have. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> hmm. Mike yeah um, look I will probably talk about it more in the last episode but can I just say to Owen to Lachlan to the listeners this has been you know an absolute joy mm. um, I have loved doing this show um, and I think look you know it's it's not because we don't you know like doing the show but it's not that we don't love the feedback and that we've been so deeply appreciative of everything you guys have done for us as listeners including you know I cherish those 
two Thai strikers, which I have actually on display oh, in yeah. my home. The Thai hunters. The Thai hunters, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. made of knives. So we've, we've been talking about yeah. it for years. Oh, right? yeah, I know. Anyway. Just, but the, yeah, the, the, the Thai hunters, the, the, the Thai fighters made of knives. Mm. Um, look, but I think, you know, it's just that, you know, our lives have, it's been busy and complex. And so... We don't, we don't need to go all that deep into no, that. But don't. I just wanted to say thank you, listeners, for yeah. listening to the show. You will get... A, uh, your bi-monthly dose once more <laughs> of three nerds sitting in a room talking about tiny spaceships. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it, it was getting to the point where you know you say the three nerds yeah. like it was. It was getting to the point where if 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 it couldn't have been like, and we, we've had guests over the time and I've enjoyed having every one of those people on every time it happened but it was getting to the point where potentially it couldn't be the three of us permanently and I just mm. you know for me it's, it's so much about working with you guys yeah and it just yeah I suppose what partly what I'm saying as well is if the show had to end and it was seeming like maybe it was going to I would rather it happen at a time when people in the audience would say oh man that sucks I really like that show rather than yeah, you probably should have ended it because it hasn't been good for ages. Yeah, you know, like end on a high point. And yeah. I like to believe that every one of our shows is damn good. So, and speaking of ending on a high point, just for fun, a little while ago, I had some little alt art cards made up. Oh, they're that, cool. That I, ma- yeah. that I made in paint and had yeah. our and had our <laughs> logo put on. And some some eagle eyed followers of the Facebook page might have noticed that I already had sent some of those out to people. Some of our some of our listeners got. The got the prototype versions of those cards, but I have one more set. Mm. So as a goodbye present, send us a message about whatever. Mm. Just tell us about a time that you were listening and you really enjoyed it. Some a time that we suggested some advice and you took it and it it did not work at at all. And you want to <laughs> Which call is generally how most of our advice goes. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Just send Don't us. us. <laughs> just send us a message about something, and we'll read all of those. Yes. And then, kind of like we did with the T-shirt a little while ago, yeah. we'll just randomly draw one name, and that person will get a yeah. set of cards that will look adequate and have <laughs> have our logo on it. And you can you can play against them with your friends, and they'll say those are not table legit. Get them out of my sight. <laughs> It's like kind of our, it's, it's kind of our motto, isn't it? Hell of a pilot, adequate. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is fantastic! All right, I'm gonna end, we're gonna end the show on that note. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. listening, and good night.